Hey friends, I'm Sakai, and today I want to show you a first look at a new plugin called Kernel. Um, this plugin is currently in early access, but essentially what it does is it allows you to design with real content and data within Figma. Um, so what this means is you can take data from an actual API and pull it into your Figma designs and create configurations for your components to use that data in real time. The example I'm going to show today is going to be using the Animal Crossing New Horizons API, which you can see right here. And let's go into the docs. This is a very simple API. It just returns a bunch of information about Animal Crossing. Uh, and the one that I'm particularly interested in today is the villagers. Uh, this is part of a multi-part series. So we're going to start today with looking at designs and then eventually we're going to build these designs out using that same API that we're using in Figma, using Tailwind and Alpine, and it's going to be a proper functioning app, which I can show you now. Um, calling it an app is a bit of a stretch. It's it's very basic and bare bones. It's using data from this live API to actually fill in all of these designs. Um, so, you know, the name, this gender symbol, properties in here, the image, everything is coming from the same API that we're using in Figma. So yeah, hopefully you follow along. It's going to be, I think, a really helpful and fun exercise. And without further ado, Let's jump into it. So the first step I'm going to take and what I would usually do in this kind of scenario is to take a look at documentation and understand what kind of data we're working with. You're not always starting off with an API, but regardless, it's always really helpful to understand what data you're working with. So what I can do is go into my ACNH API documentation uh, and I know that I want to get a list of my villagers. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to open something called Insomnia. So if you don't know, Insomnia is what's called an API client. And basically it allows you to make calls to an API without having to write all of the code that's required to do that and return all the information that you would be getting if you were making that API call in your code. It's free, it's really easy to use. So I do recommend using it for anything of this kind. But essentially what I can do with it is if we jump in here and I paste in that URL that I got earlier. It comes with a villager ID uh, and we're gonna, just gonna remove that. And now if I send this request, you can see I get a 200 and what I get in return is a list of villagers. So we have ant 00, ant 0, 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, 9, B, I don't know what these mean, uh, but essentially we're getting the data that we would get if we made this API call in our code. So what I would do at this point is to start looking at this information and see, okay, what are we working with? So for example, we have the name in US English or the name in Japanese. We have their personality. We have their birthday as a string or as a kind of like date format. Species, we have their gender, their hobby. Uh, we have these URLs to an icon, which is this, and an image, which looks like this. And what I would do in this scenario is sort of take this into Figma and start designing around this metadata. So if we jump in here, I would have this um, set of data and then just essentially start mocking out a component. And what you can see that I've done here is I've actually built out this component using the same names. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just like write a list of metadata. This is really helpful if you're also refactoring components for a design system. I know that I want to use uh, name US English and I'm probably going to use name Japan JA. You know, that's some data that I have available to me. Uh, personality. So this is what we're working with. So we've got an image. So this is going to be image or sorry, icon underscore URI. 72, perfect square. And what we can do is just for now is, you know, take this image, paste it in here as a placeholder. This is going to be wrapped in another frame uh, called profile image. It's going to have auto layout. Center this, give this fully rounded borders. So as you can see here, I've set up some color styles. And so we're just going to use a fill of this 200 and it's fully rounded. So next up, we're gonna create this little birthday chip. So I'm just gonna take a piece of text. We're gonna use placeholder again, to say, uh, actually, let's use this format. So August is 8, 11. 
and I'm just going to use phosphor icons here and let's type in birthday and we got this little cute little cake. Do we? Where'd you go? Okay. We got this cute little cake. It's, uh, it's 10 by 10. Interesting. 10 pixels by 10 pixels and probably one pixel of uh, or 0.5. Let's just go with one of a stroke and it's got this color here and we'll make it from a group into a frame just for peace of mind and then let's make this text the same color and then we're going to take both of these we're going to hit shift a and it's going to be called birthday chip and i'm just going to make sure that this is called birthday which is the name of the property from our API, right? So if we look here, we have birthday. And then we'll align vertically and give it like four, zero. Yeah, two pixels. So we'll do six and four pixels around it. We'll do 9999 to fully round it. Our fill is going to be this white. And then we'll have a stroke, which is gonna be a little bit darker. Now the last thing I want to do for this image is take the two of these, actually I'll take this, I'm going to hit command option G to wrap it in a frame. I'm just going to call it stack. I'm going to take this chip and paste it in here and center it and move it down like this. Next up, we just need to uh, add the name. So ace is this like placeholder name. I'm going to rename this layer to be name USEN. So again, I'm following the same convention as the naming here. And then we're just going to use the styles that are already set up in here. So 24, semi bold, and 24. Okay, so we have ace. This is going to be our, uh, we'll have this color here. And I'm just kind of using random colors here because this is part of the data that we're going to pull in from the API. So it doesn't really matter in the design. Uh, because eventually we're going to use the bubble color and text color to actually uh, fill in those styles. Then I'm going to wrap these in an auto layout frame. We're going to call it name chip. Okay, so it's going to have four here, 12, and then two pixels on the left and four on the right. Or sorry, two pixels uh, at the top and four on the bottom, just to balance everything out. We'll round it, and then we're just going to color pick this color here, which again is coming from the API. Then we're going to add two pieces of text. So jock, which is our uh, our personality, and the style here is 16, 16 medium. So 16, with 16, and a weight of medium. I'm just going to duplicate this. This is going to be our divider. And then our species, bird. Okay, same thing, auto layout. I'm just gonna call this row and eight is fine, We're looking good. And I'm just gonna build this here. You don't need to see how it's done. I feel like I'll probably get it at this point. We're just gonna take all of these, shift A. This is gonna be column with a space between of eight. And then we'll wrap all of these in a new frame called villager card. And we're just gonna give it a fixed width and a fixed height. Um, so the, the width is 359 and 160, 136. And this doesn't really matter because essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in a, in a big list. And this is gonna have a container size and the card is just gonna fix the container or sorry, it's, the card is just going to fill each column of the container. And then finally, our spacing is 20, and we got padding of 24 on all sides. And we're gonna make this rounded by 48 pixels. We'll give it a fill of our kind of darker color here. And our stroke is going to be pure white. Six pixels. Cool, and now we have our villager card component. Uh, 
Again, using that, that data from the API, we're using the same names, and that's gonna help us as we configure this component. And now for the exciting part. So I have this component set here. This is just a base state and a hover state. Um, there's a little interactive component interaction going on here, nothing special. But what I can do is I can open my kernel plugin, and with the component selected, if I go to the components tab, I can add a new configuration to this component. So the configuration is specific to the villager card component. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a configuration. We're gonna name it villager card. And then what you'll see is that there are little dots essentially next to everything that can be uh, created as a configuration. So we have the first one here is the catch phrase UN, uh, sorry, US English. Let me scroll down, we see catch US Yen. And what I can actually do, which I, I love this, and they showed me this in the demo, and I it was some of the first feedback I had, and they had already fixed it. Um, but I can actually uh, add quotes around this property. So I can say quote, and then give me this text data from the API, and then end quotes. Now we get a little check, and I can just kind of move through these. So the species is gonna be the species, personality is personality, Gender doesn't matter here. Uh, name US Yen. The birthday. And then finally, I can actually use an image. So I can take this icon URI, which is a, an image layer, and I can attach it to this image property from our API. And click that. And if I go ahead and create my configuration, we'll see that there is a configuration for this component right here. I can just take that component, I can pull it in, oops, from in here, villager card, and then I can take three of these, stack them next to each other, uh, we'll call this row, so we'll uh, do 20 pixels spacing between them, and we'll just pop this in the center and kind of just duplicate this a bunch of times, let's do one more, maybe we'll do one more for good measure take all of these, pop them in an auto layout. We'll call this villager grid and make sure the spacing is also 20. And then what we'll actually do is uh, pop it in something called container. And this container is going to have a fixed width of 1152. That's just a container width I've picked. Um, zero doesn't need any spacing. It does actually need uh, horizontal padding. So we'll add 32 pixels of horizontal padding, make sure the contents are centered. And then we'll go in here and make this fill container, make all the children fill container, and make all of these children also fill container. As I mentioned before, now they're just spanning the, the width of that container. Okay. And so now we have this list of components and you know, typically you might go in and kind of update these and, you know, look at maybe your data or put in some random mock data. But the beauty of kernel is we can actually go in, select all of these, open this kernel plugin, and it'll recognize that this villager card component has a configuration. So from here, I hit apply all. You can see that it goes in and fills all of that data from our API. So this is real data being pulled in from this live API which is the same API that we're gonna then use to build this. So that's pretty amazing. That's a really, really exciting plugin. Um, I can think of actually a lot of use cases where this would be used. I was working on a project previously that was all about these uh, NFT cards, um, you know, with information being pulled in from different APIs. And so it would have been a great use case for that. Or you can imagine having a CMS that maybe some of your less tech savvy stakeholders can use to maintain and they can add information into it. And then you can pull your data into your designs directly from that CMS. So as I mentioned, this is a multi-part series where we're actually gonna take this design and build it into a functioning app. And so in the next video, we are actually going to build this out using Tailwind. So you can kind of see a little bit of the code here. And then eventually we're gonna use Alpine to pull in that data from the API and add a bunch of functionality and state and cool interactivity. Yeah, that's it for today's video. Uh, as always, if you did like it, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment, doing all that fun YouTube stuff I'm sure you're all aware by now. 
And if you want to get these videos early, if you want to get access to this actual Figma file, you can follow the link to my Patreon down below, uh, where for $5 a month, you get to support the channel and you get access to all of these videos early, plus all of the files and other resources that come along with them. So I hope you enjoyed, hope to see you in the next one. And until then, happy designing. <laughs>